Good morning. Welcome to worship today as we celebrate Christian Education and Trinity Sunday. It's a d double whammy today for worship. And a special welcome to our YouTube congregation who sometimes we don't get to see them, but I know they are there watching. Um, last Sunday, oh well before I tell you that, I must say Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to those of you who are fathers and those of you who have been a father to someone, someplace along your, along your walk and along your life. We are so glad and we thank God for our fathers. Now last Sunday, you know we had this thing called the M&M Coffee House, or if you didn't know, we had this thing called the M&M Coffee House in the hall. And it is a music and music and mission coffee house to um, raise money for a little mission trip this summer. So I thought I should bring you an update. We had somewhere between 29 and 31 people, depending on who you talk to, um, that came. And we collected $237 towards a mission trip in one night. That was awesome. And the Hedgesville Church baked and baked, and there was a ton of food, and some folks from this church baked and baked, so we had lots of goodies to eat. We had good music. Eric Sandstrom and Chaz Fowler put on a wonderful uh, evening of music, and it was just a really good time. Uh, there are 22 people now going on the mission trip between the three, four churches, counting Tomahawk, and the four from this church are Judith Becker, Mary Campbell, Tom Greenwald, and myself. So we would ask that you would pray for us as we prepare and get ready to go on this mission trip in late July. Um, if you want to come to the next coffee house, it's Sunday, uh, July 14th from 6 to 8 in the hall. And I may have to ask some of you to feel help because Tom and I are part of the entertainment. We have a group that we've been playing and singing with and we're going to provide the entertainment that night so it's gonna be really hard to serve coffee and run over and play. So if you are available that night, we might um, ask if you could help a little bit. Any other announcements? Then let's pray together. Glorious Lord, our God, thank you for being our heavenly Father and for your concern for us, your children, here on earth. Thank you for Jesus, who draws us to himself and open our eyes to your love that you have for us. And thank you for your Holy Spirit, who you send to dwell in us as we trust and walk with Jesus. This morning we lift our hearts, we lift our lives, we lift our spirits to you as we seek you, Father, in and through Jesus, with the help of your Spirit in worship now. Amen.
Trish. You may be seated. Yes, that was really nice. <laughs> she did not come thinking she was going to accompany this morning. Let us join together in our prayer of confession. Let's pray. Loving God, thank you for being not only creator, but also our everlasting Lord and teacher. We are grateful for Jesus, your son, who taught us about you and how to pray our Father. He promised us your Holy Spirit, who would remind us of all that he taught us so that we might glorify you. We confess we have not always been disciples who are eager to keep learning and growing in our faith. We are sorry for letting our daily activities or other distractions take precedence over learning what you want to teach us in Jesus. Amen. Jesus said, It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. In Jesus Christ, we are loved, forgiven, and invited to learn from him as we grow up in faith, hope, and love. You may be seated. Let's pray. As you light our way this day through your word to us, O Lord, may we gladly walk with you, ever listening and learning and enjoying your presence with us along the way. Amen. Our first scripture passage this morning is from Deuteronomy. It is Deuteronomy 30, verses 11 through 14. Hear the word of the Lord. Surely this commandment that I am commanding you today is not too hard for you, nor is it too far away. It is not in heaven that you should say, who will go up to heaven for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it? Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will cross to the other side of the sea for us and get it for us so we may hear it and observe it? No, the word is very near to you. It is in your mouth. It is in your heart for you to observe. The word of the Lord. I invite Tracy Oster to come up and share her memories or her reasons for teaching, whichever one she chooses to share with you this morning. It looks like it's on. Um, one of the women is not here today, but Dorothy Corbin. Um, she was one of my Sunday school teachers, and whenever we were downstairs, the way she told the story, it just the way it made me feel inside. And I always wanted to give back that feeling to our children and to remember Madge Miller and David Miller as a Sunday school teacher. And my, um, they just made it so wonderful. And the way they told you about God and Jesus in the stories. And I always wanted to make sure our children felt the way that I felt when I was downstairs. So I hope I do okay with your children and they get that feeling that I got. Thank you, Tracy. I think we'll stay seated as we sing our hymn of sharing. Number 462, verse 1, I love to tell the story.
Well, you need to keep your book open because we're going to come back to that. I have the sharing from Becca this morning. She couldn't be here. So she sent, instead of videotaping, she sent me to, uh, a little bit to read for her. When asked why I teach and stay involved in children's ministry, I would have to say because throughout my life I have seen God's miracles and the necessity of having hope. Children only know what they experience. They are blank pieces of paper. I want to try and instill in all children God's promises. Children learn from their environments. Selfishly, I teach because I want faith, hope, compassion, community, and love to be my own children's environment. I want them to see me prepare lessons, pick up materials to teach, pray for children who will need prayed for, and that it's okay to stand up in front of others and talk about loving God and what I believe in. I want them to grow up to continue to live Christ-like. Life is tough, and I want them to have the foundation to know where to look for guidance and how to put their faith first so that everything else will fall into place. Thank you, Becca. Uh, let's finish that hymn by singing the second verse. Well, it's my turn to share now. In my memories of Christian education, I, I remembered so many different things. I don't know, how many of you remember flannel boards? I remember flannel boards when I was a little girl. And we had coloring sheets, just like I handed out to the kids this morning. And we got to dress up sometimes and act out the stories, and I love that. Um, we had vacation Bible school, and one year I remember we got to dress up our Barbies like missionaries, and I thought that was so cool. And they got to travel around, you know, and we took them in. Somebody had made like wagons, like covered wagons. Oh, I mean, that was like, that was awesome to me as a kid. And I remember singing Bible songs, and I learned this next song we're going to sing. I love to tell the story. I mean, no, this is my father's world from Arminda Ryan. She not only taught the class, she played the piano. She was a lot like Trish. She was really good. So um, she could do everything. And um, I, I just have great memories. Uh, she, was, she was my Dorothy Corbin. I, um, I have great memories of her as my Sunday school teacher. And then we had a little library in our church, and we actually had a church librarian. And she would help you. When you came in to find a book, she would help you sign out. And I remember being a little girl learning how to sign up she had, she had cards like a, in a real library. <laughs> so we had to check out our books, and she would sign and stamp our little cards. And those give me um, great memories to look back on. But, but, you know, I kind of took a little vacation from Christian education, kind of, and I, didn't, I got older, and I didn't go to church as much. And I kind of wavered a little bit in my walk and then found my way back as an adult. And I had children, and I found myself in a church where they had three adult education classes. I was like, wow. And so Tom and I actually, I wasn't on, no, I was a choir director, but I was volunteer. So we got to go to Sunday school together, like we do here, which I love. And it was really fun to go back to Sunday school and um, start learning again as an adult. And um, I also, there was a, our, we had a, um, PW in that church. They had a big PW. And the younger women wanted to do it a little different. And so we finally did. And we had a Bible study that we did Beth Moore studies. And then I got my call to ministry and realized, oh, I was really behind on my Christian education because when I got in seminary, I felt like I hadn't learned enough. So that was like, seminary is kind of like Sunday school through a fire hose. I mean, it's just kind of like so much comes at you, but it was, it was all good. So I'm thankful that, um, that we have 
uh, children's church here and that we have an adult Sunday school class, although we only have one. But, um, but I invite you all to um, share. If you want to share this morning and you're not, you know, your name's not down there, just raise your hand. I'll make room for you this morning if you have a great thing to share. But um, I think it's a wonderful blessing that we um, get to grow and learn and um, continue to grow in our faith all our lives long. So let us sing one of my favorites and what I learned in Sunday school, 370. This is my father's world. And let's stand and sing this. It's, we'll sing the whole song. <laughs> seated. Our second scripture this morning is from John. It is John 1 verses 1 through 14. Listen to the word of God. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. All things came into being through him and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life and the life was the light of the people of all the people and the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world came into being through him yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own and his own people did not accept him but to all who received him who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. Amen. I invite up uh, Mary Campbell to come share with us. I find it not a coincidence that uh, you led off the children with the story of in the temple. <clears throat> that was one of our favorites when I was in kindergarten. Uh, and my Dorothy Corbin was uh, Miss Borland, and uh, we knew Miss Borland from before we were born until we graduated from high school and moved off. She was wonderful, and her assistant was Miss Lane, who played the piano for us. She could play anything, much like Trish. Uh, it was a, a growing up experience in the church. We just went from class to class, and the big moment for us uh, in kindergarten was when we got to go upstairs to the intermediate department. We were practically grown up. It was wonderful. At any rate, uh, those memories stay with us all of our lives, even when you get to be uh, one of the uh, older ones, as I am gratefully one of. Um, when uh, Karen first came, Pastor Greenwald, excuse me, uh, uh, she asked us, uh, why is Sunday school important to you? And uh, uh, I could, nobody could explain it right then. We just knew ingrained that Sunday school was for us. And we had a group back at the table, 
and we renamed it Coffee and Conversation, not Sunday School or Bible Study. It's the same thing, just a new name. <laughs> but we meet every Sunday morning uh, at 9.45 or 10 o'clock, depending upon how early you get up. And um, around that table with your cuppy, coffee cup in your hand, uh, you can tap into a great wealth of knowledge, uh, theology, tradition. You can get encouragement from personal experiences of others. You don't have to live them yourself. You can learn from them. And you have a, get a, grain, uh, pardon me, gain a deeper understanding of the gospel and uh, a greater love of Christ. This uh, year we've been studying this book. Uh, it's a book about Paul. Um, by N.T. Wright, and it is giving us some new insight into who this man was, what he did, and why he did it. Uh, I encourage any of you to read this book, and if you want to join us, we're just about halfway through. We still have an interesting way to go on it. Uh, and this book leads us into our follow-up study, which is going to be Romans. We're starting that, I think, in the fall. And uh, that is going to give us a different kind of perspective on N.T. Wright, but from which we can draw our, our conclusions and fit, the, fit them into our uh, understanding of the gospel. Um, in uh, 2008, uh, I went back to my hometown. It was our 45th uh, high school class reunion. <laughs> this chokes me up. And the people that were there was my Sunday school class. There were so many of us left, and we all embraced. It was wonderful. So Sunday school is a wonderful experience that you can carry with you throughout your life and into the next. Thank you. Uh, let us remain seated and sing uh, 707, Take Thou Our Minds, Dear Lord, verses 1 and 2. Our next scripture passage is from Ephesians this morning. It's where the, the title comes from today, Learning Christ. That's how Paul put it in the, one, of these, one portion of the Ephesians passage I'm going to read today. We're going to start at 4, and we're starting at 11 through 16. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry for building up the body of Christ until all of us come into unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to maturity to the measure of the full stature of Christ we must lo no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine by people's trickery by their craftiness and deceitful scheming but speaking the truth in love we must grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ from whom the whole body joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped as each part is working properly promotes the body's growth and building itself up in love. I really think this is what we do in our coffee and conversations, in our church, children's church, in VBS, and all the ways we learn. 
I want to invite Patty Oster to come up and share with us. Please. So one reason I teach children church is adults scare me to death when I have to talk to you in front. Children I don't have a problem with. Um, I feel that I'm being guided as part of children's church because I hope to pass on to the children what I remembered. And I get emotional, sorry. I might not remember all my teachers, but I remember that they made me feel loved by Jesus, no matter what it looked like or what I was wearing. Elizabeth Glasscock was my mentor in the church, as well as Dick Lede. They made me feel welcome. And they made me feel loved. Elizabeth Glasscock actually gave me this book to read. It was given to her by her mother on April 27th, 1924. And she gave it to me when I became a Sunday school teacher to read to my children and my grandchildren and the children in Sunday school. Um, my daughter Brittany, the same day that I got this book, which I found in here, made this in children's church, and it says, thanks be to God for his incredible gift of Jesus, which I thought was awesome that I still had this in this book. Um, in Vacation Bible School, I'm with the kids. I've remembered the games and the songs. My favorite songs were Jesus Loves, Me, Loves the Little Children, This Little Christian Candle Man, which I still sing to my kids, and Jesus Loves, Jesus Loves Me, which whenever Bev plays always makes me cry because I think about those wonderful times. Um, one of the prayers that I remembered was, I hear no voice, I feel no touch, I see no glory bright, but yet I know that God is near in darkness and in light. God watches over, over my side and hears my whispered prayer. A God of love for a little child, both night and day, does care. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's remain seated as we sing, Jesus Loves Me, number 188. scripture lesson this morning is the, the, the last little part in Ephesians 4 17 through 24 now this I affirm and insist on in the Lord you must no longer live as the Gentiles live in the futility of their minds they are darkened in their understanding alienated from life of God because of their ignorance and hardness of heart they have lost all sensitivity and abandoned themselves to licentiousness greedy to practice every kind of impurity that is not the way you learn Christ for surely you have heard about him, and you were taught in him, as truth is in Jesus. You were taught to put away your former way of life, your old self, corrupt and deluded by its lusts, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to close yourselves with the new self, created according to the likeness of God, and the true righteousness and holiness. Amen. Well, Bev, I think 
had to go because she wasn't feeling well, but she had something she was going to share today. D did she give that to anybody to share? I don't know. She might not have written it down even. might have just been in her heart. Would you? Okay, good. Sure. Well, you, you know, you are cousins, so. We are. Yeah. Yes, we are. Um, Dad and I uh, talked last night. Bev had called him about um, something that she remembered that, because she's older than me, I don't remember so well, but um, it was about the digging of the basement, which um, I remember as a child, Dad said to me last night, do you remember the Sunday school rooms in the back and how many Sunday school rooms we had and the curtains that divided and the areas down here where different people taught names that many of us remember so well. And Selogis and Dad, Frank Miller taught those classes. And Dad talked about, he didn't say a lot about the fact that it probably wasn't totally unanimous that they dig that out down there. But it was clear that it was a bit of a leap of faith um, that, that that occurred. And that um, some of the men got together uh, and found a way to do it. And I heard him tell Bev this morning, and we didn't have Tom, and we didn't have Mickey, we didn't have experts in how to do this. We just did it one piece at a time. And sometimes we'd get to a place, and we'd stand back, and we'd draw out the next place. And this is where we go. We had to dig out the dirt. And Bev's memory, I don't remember this, but Dad said, you know, it was always we wanted to get it right because not everybody was totally on board, so it was important that everything go well. And that morning that they dug the hole down here and realized that it just might not be safe for Sunday morning because they hadn't gotten that steel beam in and Dad had been cutting posts off the lo uh, locust posts off the farm and bringing them up here, and they just hadn't gotten that set yet. He said, I feel like maybe we had to eat a little crow that Saturday when we said we, we just can't safely have church up there. We're going to have to have it at the hall. But clearly, um, it worked and has been working. And that basement is a leap of faith, just like it seems to me that this church in so many ways has been leaps of faith to continue uh, through all kinds of Hmm, what should happen next? So it's not exactly the way Bev remembers the fear of Sunday morning. I don't have that one of not having church here that day. But I do see it as part of a long line of wonderful leaps of faith in this church. Thank you very much. Let's pray. Gracious God, our Father, I thank you that that we are of a church of leaps of faith. Thank you because, because Jesus in so many ways for people when he came as the Messiah, it took a leap of faith to believe that he was really who he said he was. It was a leap of faith for his disciples to leave everything and follow him and become the lifelong learners of him that they were. It is a leap of faith that we continue to put on a VBS this coming week, and to have Children's Church, and to invite and encourage families to come, come, get to know Jesus, come back to church, be disciples of Jesus. We thank you this day for, I thank you, Lord, as the pastor, and I thank you for this congregation, and for those that were willing to share their hearts, because it is when we share our, our, stories, our journeys, that we grow closer to you and to each other, and we become more unified in our faith. I thank you, Lord. Um, we, we are blessed with people who are willing to say yes, not only to play the piano when they don't plan to, but to, ta to come and teach and feed and care for the children in all the different ways that need be. Lord, this morning we, we would thank you for the fathers in our lives, for those who are named fathers and those who didn't even get the title, but they were fathers to us, maybe even in the church. Some of those men that taught Sunday school were like fathers to those children. They, were, they had that 
um, mentoring way with them and we're needed. I thank you, Lord, for showering us as our Heavenly Father with all the gifts of love and grace and healing mercies. And so this day, Lord, there are some folks that are in need of healing. Um, I lifting up this morning Grandma Man, Grandma Betty Man, who uh, went to the, by ambulance to the hospital last night with a possible stroke. So we lift Betty up to you, Lord, and that, that she would receive your healing grace this morning as they uh, continue, I'm sure, to monitor and test her. And we lift up Lenny, who uh, has been in ICU for a few days, but was doing better and um, still had some issues that were keeping him there. So, Lord, we lift him up to you for your continued grace and mercy and healing in his body. Lord, we um, lift up Jenny as she continues to heal, and we thank you for that. We lift up Sandy as her upcoming surgery on her shoulder, and we, we lift that to you for your grace and your mercy all over her and over that surgery for the healing that you have so that she could sleep all night and, um, and be back to using her arm as she'd like. And Lord, we lift up Jim Teeter as he continues to be able to take the treatments on his cancer that he's got and that, Lord, that cancer would go, that he would no longer need those treatments and that would be the thing uh, in his past. Lord, we also lift up Bev. And so I'm not sure what was wrong, but Lord, I thank you that you know and that you are bringing your healing grace and mercy to bear on her and getting her the care she needs, even as we continue in worship, knowing that's what she'd want us to do, but by remembering her and thanking you, Jesus, that you are um, always bringing your healing grace as we look to you and gather around her in our prayers. You are already there ministering, ministering in such a beautiful way. We pray all this in your name, Jesus. Amen. It is now time in worship where we, um, we bring our gifts and our tithes and our offerings. And um, as we do so, when we get done, we're going to say our prayer. We're going to give a prayer of thanks. And I invite folks who are part of VBS at that time to stand up. Right now, we'll just do our offering. And then we're going to commission VBS. So let's, let's bring our offerings. <coughs> we lift up these gifts given even as we lift up those that are standing that are part of the VBS team whether they're teachers whether they brought food whether there are children that are joining in VBS we lift each of these as gifts to you as well and we thank you Lord for the gifts of talent we thank you for the gifts of hands that are going to work we thank you for the gifts of people preparing food people who are teaching children we thank you for gifts given tangible ways like um, the food that's being donated or the money that's being given. And that in all these ways, Lord, you would um, use them for your glory, for your kingdom. And that we um, would be blessed, as even as we bless you, we'd be blessed as we go on to this VBS week to tell your story, Jesus, to proclaim your name 
and to invite the newest and youngest generation to become a part of this, your church. In your name we pray it, Jesus. Amen. Let us say what we believe um, by um, the, the uh, Apostles' Creed. We'll use that today. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered and was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Um, you may be seated as we sing our communion hymn, number 500, um, Be Known to Us in the Breaking Bread. Let us sing... Um, Today we celebrate the glorious feast of the kingdom of God. Whoever trusts in Jesus as their Lord and Savior is welcome to this table. Um, we will receive this bread and cup through the elders who will pass it out and share it with you. Let's pray. God of steadfast love and faithfulness, we are in awe of your gift to us in your Son, our Savior Jesus. Thank you for inviting us through Jesus to be a part of your family. Thank you for this table spread before us where we join Jesus in a meal. Truly, we are blessed indeed. We bless you for this food drawn from your fields and the vines out there in the countryside. We bless you for all of your world and its bounty that is daily on our tables and is a feast to our eyes. But your food to us comes in your words spoken this morning and in your son Jesus who gave up his life so we might have life everlasting. May we live to do your will, Father God, in and through Jesus, as we pray together the prayer that he taught, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from you. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On that night, when it was the Passover meal, Jesus was celebrating, and the night when he would be betrayed and um, arrested, he took the bread from the table, and he, he gave a blessing to God for it, and then he broke it and said, this is my body, given to you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup that was on the table and he said, this is a cup and a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you show forth my death until I come again. Oh, Jesus, thank you for this reminder, a tangible reminder of your body and your blood in this bread and cup. They nourish us and they go deep inside us. Would you remind us on a daily basis this week how you are with us, just like the taste of our bread and the taste of our drink. You are within us and all around us, and you go with us wherever we are, bringing light and life. 
through us. Hallelujah. Amen. Would you stand as you're able, and we'll, we'll sing our closing hymn. We'll be number 707, Take Thou Our Minds, the last two verses, three and four. I want to remind you that there's a little open house downstairs and some goodies down there to see in the history room. Um, and also VBS this week. Please keep all the folks in VBS in your prayers. We will need them. And um, then I, I want to challenge you as you go out that um, you've heard the saying, you are the Bible, your neighbor reads. So that whatever we do each week, I pray that it is first we put our, we have actually opened up our Bible before we go, because for the Bible to be in us, truly we need to be in our Bibles. Uh, we can't have, you know, unless we've memorized that scripture, I hope you all memorized as little children. But otherwise, I, I keep reading mine, because sometimes it doesn't stick very well, so that I can be a better Bible for our neighbor. In the name of our Father, God, Son, Jesus, and Holy Spirit, amen. <laughs>